On the breakfast, the new Nigerian People's Party NNPP considers option for running mate in Labour Party. Will there be a third force ahead of the 2023 elections? Also on the breakfast, ahead of the 2022 Oshun State Governorship election slated for July 16th, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, will commence conduct of mock accreditation exercise for electorate today. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspaper, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Welcome right here to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am a messy Bopo. As always, we start off with a top trending conversation. And first on the list is uh, a very unfortunate, very saddening story. Uh, please rescue, uh, you know, 30 children from uh, a basement in Ondo State. And a lot's just been happening in on those state right there. Now there were reports of scores of children who were found on the ground of the apartment in church in on those state. It was gathered that these children were kidnapped, yes, and kept on the ground in the church apartment. And for those who actually believe, you know, in the scriptures and in the Bible, you also, uh, it's important to note that uh, test all spirits. You do not have to believe all because one would think that a church should be the safest place. But it's very commendable of the Nigerian police force in Ondo State. Very commendable. I mean, what they have done, we applaud them and we say thank you for, um, you know, swinging into action and rescuing these persons who were kidnapped. And we're hoping that, you know, thorough investigation will be done. Now, according to reports, it's saying that um, uh, over 30 were rescued and they also arrested the pastor and members of the church. And the children were seen in the patrol vehicle of the police who took them to the police station. So it's commendable that um, this life has been saved. I mean, no one can actually tell uh, what it is. What's important, like I mentioned, it's important that you test our spirits and you do not believe, you know, uh, all spirit. Now, no, that's what you have right there. But another one, well, let's move away from that quickly. But the most important thing and, you know, the reaction that's been coming through is that Nigerians are asking that there be a thorough investigation to what exactly happened. I mean, how do you explain the fact that you have children uh, kidnapped, according to purportedly kidnapped, you know, um, and they're found on the, the basement, on the ground part of the church. So um, it's a good thing, like I rightly mentioned, uh, but we think it's a cross and we're hoping that the men of the Nigerian police force will swing into action and then would get the full details and justice should be meted in case you have a culprit. But away from that is that uh, 14 babies died in an incubator. That's according to the particular report. So it's a two side to the story. Now, if you, you're very uh, swift with Twitter, you'll find out those report that doctors suspended surgery procedures uh, in the University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital due to power outages, you know, however you want to describe it. And so there were reports that not less than 14 babies had died at the incubator of the University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital due to that power situation. And now um, some patients at the hospital said that the surgery procedure uh, was suspended. You have someone who spoke in, and, and uh, uh, talked about, you know, the fact that people died, 14 kids, and one of them were uh, from a couple who have been waiting and been very expectant of having a child, but unfortunately, uh, that didn't really happen until the unfortunate incident happened, right? Uh, th these kids were there, they died. But there's also another report on the other hand, where the University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital has denied the viral claim on social media that 14 babies died in a special care uh, baby unit due to power outage. Uh, that it was also put out on a tweet 
you know and uh, they're saying that yes the irregular power supply at the hospital also disrupted uh, surgery procedures but they are saying uh, you know the report saying that the babies 14 of them died is not really true so the, the question is whose report do we believe that's the question because if you look at uh, the Nigerian health sector I mean it's been very worrisome for a lot of persons. There's a lot that's been going on with the health sector. You want to look at the budget. First, there was a declaration, uh, a Buja declaration, where you were supposed to have like 15% of the budget allocated to the health sector. Now, and this is supposed to be for, you know, countries within this union, the African Union. But so far, Nigeria has not been compliant with that declaration. As you look at the budgetary allocation, that's uh, been made in different times, uh, you find out that we haven't really met the 15% budgetary or budget allocation or that declaration that was made. So the reaction has been that the government should be sued, sue the hospitals, sue the government, sue everybody. But who should we be suing is the question, right? Uh, don't also forget that the University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital is under the poor view of the uh, ministry, federal ministry of health. Uh, so it's within the poor view of the federal government. It is a tertiary institution or when you look at the cadre of health institutions. So you have the primary, you have the secondary and you have the tertiary and that's the tertiary. But is it really true that whether or not the babies actually die, but is it really true that there's also issues of power outage? in our hospitals across different parts of the country? Do we have constant power supply? Uh, what is the capacity, uh, what is the generation capacity when we talk about the national grid? How much are we generating? What is the entire population? What other sectors do we have? Anyway, should we begin to blame the distribution company? And some other persons are saying that the distribution company should make it a priority to um, you know, distribute, I mean, as important in the order of importance and the scale of preference, the health sector should be top on the list. But what will, what can the distribution company do when you have about 3,522 megawatts generated for a population of over 211 million people? How do you even manage that? Who should, you know, <laughs> who should take, uh, you know, the chunk of it? At the end of the day, it's the question that begs for a lot of answer. If we solve the energy crisis in the country, will we be grappling with whether or not you know, power went out? Did the babies really die? Are people really dying because of lack of power supply uh, in the hospitals, in our hospitals? Should hospitals have generators? Should they have you know, solar system, in inverters? What should these hospitals do? Are these hospitals on the, the management of government? There's a lot to talk about, really. But it's a good thing to, to hear that, you know, that on the other hand, you also have uh, the hospital saying, hey, yes, there were power outage, I mean, there was power outage situation, but which disrupt, you know, the surgery procedures, but um, 14 babies did not really die because uh, they were really not in the incubator. And on the other hand, you have reports saying that there were babies in the incubator. Uh, so the question is, who should we believe? But even if that's not the case, I mean, if it's something to go by, if those children did not die, is there a challenge of power supply in our health sector? Do you, hospitals have constant power supply? Has it truncated the operation? Have we lost lives? And who should answer? Where is the Minister for Health? Or where's the Minister in charge of the Health Ministry? How much was allocated for the budget in 2022? All right, that's it. Uh, also on Top Trending, we quickly move away from that. There's also another interesting conversation where you have uh, uh, a video that was actually viral, and he talks about uh, pastor, a very popular pastor uh, of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, uh, Adeboye, talking about him not asking Christians to use guns. But we'll quickly look at this track before we come back and discuss further. Whatever I say, some people may want to twist it. But I've searched the Bible from cover to cover. 
And there's no way here, no way in the Bible where God said a child of God cannot defend himself. If you find the place, let me know. He said, if they slap you on the right cheek, turn the left. Abi, he said that one. If they now slap the left, what did he say? God is silent. Do you know the meaning of that? It simply means over to you. Every enemy of the church, as long as my father is on his throne, as long as Jesus lives, as long as his name is the consuming fire, if they don't repent, the fire of God will consume them. I'm not talking to everybody, I'm only talking to my children. Who well, um, that's the video of uh, Pastor Deboye talking about defense. And uh, there's a lot to I listened to that video. Uh, and of course, the message was actually put out as well as uh, the thoughts of it. But looking at Twitter and looking at all the reaction, uh, it's been quoted that he's asked Nigerians uh, to carry guns or ask people to carry guns for self-defense. I mean, it was more of a... Uh, what's that called? It's a part of speech. You talk about a question where a question is put out to you and you're not expected to answer. But of course you're supposed to think about it. And that's what it is. The issue of self-defense, the issue of arming, one, arming oneself against uh, an attack. Now in recent times we've seen prominent persons who talk about uh, taking up arms. For instance, the Zamfara state government has gone, you know, very far, has uh, made several efforts in asking that um, people should take out arms and defend themselves uh, in, in the case of an attack. But let's also not forget the fact that uh, generally, should we even get to this point where we have anything close to this kind of conversation, if the government of the day lives up to her responsibility, which is also in the Constitution, as so much reflected. We're looking at section 14, subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution uh, that placed the responsibility on the shoulders of government to safeguard the lives of her citizens and ensure that their properties are protected as well. But if the government has lived up to her expectation, should Nigerians, should anyone even consider the issue of having uh, bearing arms or defending themselves in any situation whatsoever. Uh, but in this particular case, I mean, if you listen to that uh, conversation, it was just more of a, a rhetoric question that was put out. Uh, more like, you know, that conversation where you should think about it in your mind, and that's what it was. But we've seen several, um, you know, thoughts that's been put out on different social media platforms. But the pastor in court has also come out to defend his himself, saying that I did not ask Christians, uh, you know, to buy guns. He's saying that he's gone through the scripture. And if you're a Christian, if you believe in the Bible, there's no word that the Bible says you shouldn't defend yourself. But also, on the other hand, you want to ask yourself, how do you defend yourself um, if you are faced with a threat? Do you need a gun? What do you need to defend yourself? Are there other instruments that can be used to defend oneself? Well, that's it on the top trending this morning. We'll take a break, and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of the national dailies. Please stay with us.